Hey, what's up friends? Dennis the Prescott here. It's been a minute. We were super busy the last couple weeks working on projects and that kind of thing, but we're stoked to be back and they actually just wait a second. This is Berkeley. She's new too in the past couple weeks. Check her out. She's so cute. All right, so food time. I am hungry, you're hungry. We're doing steak night. We're making steak, we're making chips, and we're making chimichurri. Let's rock it. Y'all, I love steak night. I love everything about it. There's few things on the planet better than a properly cooked steak. But learning to cook steak properly, honestly, is not very hard with a few quick and easy steps. And then you can recreate that dinner, that meal, that dish at your favorite restaurant in your house. Super win-win, not difficult at all. So first up, we're gonna get our side ready to go. I love potatoes. I love everything about them, legit everything about them. They're amazing cooked six ways to Sunday. It's incredible to me that something so simple as a potato can be cooked so many different ways and be delicious every single way you cook them. Today, we're gonna make potato wedges or chips or fries, depending upon where you're from, but ultimately these are baked off potato wedges that we're gonna cook in oil, some salt and pepper, a little bit of rosemary, throw that in an oven, for about an hour, so we've got some time before we crack on with the steak and the sauce. All right, potatoes. Super easy, super simple. Few things you wanna do. So you wanna get your potatoes, have them, have them again, and you wanna end up with potato wedges that are kind of like this. So you're basically cutting eight potato wedges per potato. Once you've got your potatoes all cut into wedges, that's gonna go in cold water. We're gonna parboil them. Bring that to a rapid boil, get it rocking, parboil them for about five to six minutes. Drain the potatoes and then transfer these directly back to that hot pot without any water and give it a nice shake or 10. That's gonna help chuff up the sides. When you get those potatoes that are incredibly crispy on the outside and light as heaven on the inside, that's what does it. That's the trick. I learned it from Jamie Oliver years ago, so shout out to that dude. But uh, these are gonna make the best potatoes ever. So we gave these potatoes a real good toss. If you look hard, you can see these little roughed up edges. That is gonna go golden brown and super crispy when they're baked off with a little bit of oil. This is the money maker, this is what you want. So we're gonna transfer them to a baking dish, hit that with olive oil, salt, and pepper, nice fresh rosemary as well, then transfer that to an oven at 350 degrees for about an hour or until golden brown and perfect. All right, so the potatoes are roasting away. They're doing their thing. The next thing we wanna do is get our sauce ready to go. This is one of my favorite sauces in the whole world. It's super easy to throw together. Literally, you combine everything in a food processor, waz it up until it's smooth, and then you're all set. And it's amazing served with chips, served along a steak, but honestly, it's fantastic as a marinade. It's fantastic with fish. It's just an all-around epic sauce. So in your food processor, combine a handful of parsley, cilantro, some diced up red onion, sliced jalapeno, smashed garlic cloves, olive oil, red wine vinegar, and fresh and amazing lime juice. Then hit that with a nice bit of salt and pepper. Then waz that bad boy up until it's smooth and buttery deliciousness. All right, so steak time. We've got our potatoes almost ready to go. The sauce is all ready. Right here, we've got about an inch and a half strip loin steak. I like my steak cooked medium, really medium rare. So the thicker the steak, the better. It's gonna make sure that you get that outside crispy, amazing crust and it's cooked properly on the inside. So we're gonna hit this with a little bit of olive oil and go on that with a nice bit of salt and fresh cracked pepper and give that a nice rub. Make sure it's completely coated. And that's gonna go into a screaming hot cast iron pan. All right, so this cast iron pan is as hot as the sun. Literally, windows are all open. It's smoking everywhere. You wanna make sure that you get your house set because you don't wanna set off your fire alarm. I have got a timer set. It just hit one minute, so we're gonna give that a flip. That is gonna flip every minute on the minute for eight minutes for a medium rare cooked steak, and then we're gonna let that rest. If you want it cooked a little bit more than that, if you wanna go medium or medium well, just continue cooking it a couple extra minutes. 
flipping every minute. All right, so we've got about two minutes left on the steak. We've just added some butter, fresh rosemary, and garlic, and we're gonna baste this over the steak for the remaining two minutes. That's gonna soak in all of that incredible extra deliciousness. Amazing steak, the best steak you've ever had in your life. So steak's all done cooking, but we're not done with the steak. It is essential that you let your steak rest. Resting and relaxing the steak allows it to just do that. It relaxes, it kind of chills out a little bit, it, it's not as tense, and that's what helps to make this steak juicy, just incredibly delicious on the inside. It's really important. Honestly, growing up, I didn't give this the time it needed. I didn't rest my steaks, and really that's probably why I didn't like steak night. Resting them, super essential. All right, so we've got our steak all rested and sliced up. We've got these crispy golden chips already to go in a chimichurri. The last thing you wanna do is any of these little juices that have kind of collected on the pan that you are resting your steak. That is gold, it's liquid dynamite, it's amazing. Never waste this, don't pour it down the sink. Pour that right over top of the steak. It is well worth it, it's amazing. And the last thing that we wanna do is hit this with a nice bit of flaked finishing salt. Oh yeah, steak cooked perfectly. You guys seriously need to try this recipe. If you want all the exact details and measurements, hit the link below to go to my website. If you're not subscribed already, I'd love you to join this community. So smash that subscribe button and we'll see you next week for more deliciousness.